What's up guys? As you see here, um, a Springfield 1911 government model, 5 inch full size. Um, just got this pistol a little bit ago and I've uh, been doing some some tinkering around with it. As you can see it's not it's got some different stuff on it. Um, just going to do a quick update on this this 1911. Uh, I don't necessarily want to call it a build but just you know me playing with this gun. Um, I bought it new a couple months ago and I bought the plain regular GI model um, because I knew I was going to do some stuff to it. So uh, I have done a little bit to it. It is basically to the point where I need to just do a little bit more polishing work and then I also have to do a refinish on it. I'm not sure what that refinish is going to do. I'm either going to Duracoat it, I've got a neat design in mind for this, um, or a polish and reblue. I don't know what I want to do. I'm also going to um, carve my own grips, which I'll do an update video with that when I'm doing that. But I uh, just want to show you guys what i got going on here. Um, put a whole bunch of Wilson Combat parts in there with a the trigger starting with. Took all the play out of it. You can see there's very, very little wiggle room in here. So it's a nice tight, um, nice tight fit with this. I polished the, the tracks for the trigger. I have an extended Wilson Combat um, magazine release. Wilson Combat slide release. Wilson Combat safety. These are all stainless. Um, I do not like how big it is. These are the, this is the extended competition uh, safety on here, and I don't like how big it is. It actually, um, it it gets in my way when I hit the, the, uh, the slide release. So I'm actually going to take this to the grinder and fix that up a little bit. I'm not really happy with that, but no big deal. I'll grind it down, and it'll be fine. Um, Wilson Combat Hammer on there, skeletonized hammer. A Smith & Alexander grip safety on there. I fit everything here in the back. If you look at a standard 1911, especially the lower end ones like this, it's not smooth back here. So took a Dremel of that. I still got to polish that up nice, get those grind marks out of there, but made that nice and flush. Um, some other things I did some, some some machining to it. As you see, the top is flattened. See a profile view there. So I flat top the, the uh, top of the slide. Of course, I'm not going to leave it that shiny. This is just machine finish, basically. I haven't even polished it, but I've got it to. Basically, when I did this, I wanted to bring the flat spot level with the back of the ejection port cover. Ejection port cover. Ejection port. Excuse me. So uh, I got that flat spot on there. That's purely cosmetic. Um, with this um, slide stop, I machined down the one side, the opposite side, so it's not sticking up. It's flush. And then I threw the frame in the mill and I ground it out a little bit there so it's actually indented when you're taking the gun down. So I did that. Um, you also find on some better, not better 1911s, but higher end 1911s, um, Colt Kimbers, um, they're higher ones. They'll have a, a machine mark in here, basically an indentation for your finger. Well, what I did was I put it in the mill and I, actually this way, right-handed, and I basically lift the back end of the gun up a hundred thousandths of an inch and milled into here. So basically at a side view, it's not very aggressive. On this angle here, you can see it kind of swoops and does a nice little motion there. And if you look at it from the other side, you can barely tell anything's done at all. But if you look underneath, there is a recess that's angled, an angled recess that I put in there um, so that it will help with your finger as you get a nice firm pistol grip on there. And uh, I do like the way that turned out a lot. It feels really, really good in your hand. It's not aggressive, but it is definitely noticeable. Um, other than that, I put a, uh, a heavier wolf spring in there. Um, I polished the sear spring, all the connecting points on there. So that's nice and smooth now. And, oh, yep, I cut a 45 degree chamfer as you see it shining there. On the bottom of the slide, that is kind of to uh, deburr it basically, it's a sharp edge normally, but I went ahead and milled a 45 degree angle on that so that it uh, it just it looks nicer, I mean it looks kind of goofy now because it's just the, the bare metal, it's very shiny and everything, but but it does look nicer with that angle on there. 
um, dehorned some other parts that were really pointy and a pain in the butt. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. The modifications I did to the to the gun, I like it. I haven't shot it yet. Um, it'll function just fine. I didn't do anything that crazy to it. But um, right now is basically going to be a refinish. What I think I'll probably do is I'll do this. I'm going to attempt this um, this pretty neat looking Duracoat job on it. Um, and if I don't like the way that tur turns out, I'll just file it down and, uh, and just re-blow it. Not a big deal. So I'll do an update when I am working on the grips and when I do a Duraco job on this. And we'll, uh, we'll take a look and see how this turns out. But uh, that's the update on my 1911 build.